For most young people, an Operation Rally expedition is a chance to live and work with remote communities all over the world. An adventure to develop individual potential and learn to overcome the impossible. For a few, it provides an opportunity to make a film. This week's film, shot by students at the National Film and Television School, takes up the story in Chile. Seven hundred miles south of Santiago, there's a small, isolated village called Puelo. No roads lead to Puelo. The only way to get there is by boat. And once you're there, the only form of transport is horse. It's completely cut off. grew up on the banks of the river Puelo, but the banks have become so eroded that every winter the whole village floods, so they're having to move all the buildings three miles up the road to higher ground. Operation Rally heard about the problem, offered to help, and 11 of our expedition were sent out here for our community project. We're a complete mixture of people, secretaries, cooks, a nurse, a bank clerk, there's an architect and a builder, they should come in handy, and there's me. My name's John, I'm an electrician for London Underground. Puelo is about 20 miles from the Argentinian border and is the only place for 200 miles around where you can get through the valley to Argentina. So they're planning to develop it as a sort of border town. The new town was built fairly recently by the Department of Environment. It looks like a bunch of bike sheds dumped in the middle of nowhere. We're living in one of them for the next three weeks. As the towns developed, they phased out the old style wooden houses. In fact, the only one left belongs to our neighbour Javier. He came from the mountains. He's a carpenter and he built his own house. About three years ago, the Department of Environment built this kindergarten in the old town. It's in the wrong place. It's by the river. So we've got three weeks to move it. In order to dismantle any building, it helps to know how it's put together. Fortunately, we've got a royal engineer, Tim, to oversee this project. No problem at all. No, that's no problem at all. I'm the project electrician. I mean, I didn't even know. Oh, that's what it is, actually. Oh, you can't be. You can't switch. No. This is a hard enough job as it is, but trying to get equipment presents whole new problems. Um, me? See? <laughs> yeah? See? Do I see? I much prefer doing something constructive than doing something that I consider is not really important, like climbing up a mountain just to look at a piece of um, ice when in fact I could have been doing something you know, with a community, with people, instead of stuck in an isolated place right here. You've got a job to do for people. 
which at the end of the day, you know, you can stand back and say, well, at least I've contributed something to those, you know, to that community. I mean, generally out here, you are working with people who are really poor. And it's really sort of basic type thing. You know, at home, you sort of turn around and say, well, the Ponzi government should do something about it. You know, it's their responsibility. We're out here, it's a joke. I mean, whatever little we do helps the community. And it's much more appreciated than at home. I mean, I suppose even if you did do something after time, it's never appreciated back home. But that's a bit narrow-minded, because that's like saying, um, I mean, why should you not make some inroads at home? Why should the government do it? Well, we should pay taxes, I, that's what I'd say. Also, I think they're more handle, um, handle, we're more capable of solving problems out here, because they're more straightforward. <laughs> The method that's been adopted for moving this town, which I presume is due to a lack of money, is to dismantle the buildings, down their last nail, carry them up to the new town, and hopefully put them back together more or less the way they were. The gang's been split into two. While half of us are dismantling the school down by the river, the rest of the group are up in the new town digging 36 four-foot holes with mess tins and soup ladles in preparation for the foundations. By working in a, in a country, in a place, you, you do get to know, get a feel for more of the place, especially when you stay in one place for a long time. Mm. And if I was just passing through Chile, travelling with the rucksack on my back, I wouldn't get the satisfaction of having got to know the community and some of the people in that community. Raul is the mayor of Pueblo. He's only here for two years, then he goes back to work in the city. This is the book. It's sort of close to see a man with a briefcase in the middle of the house. He doesn't seem to mix with the villagers at all, and he spends every evening with us. It's a good break. It's broken. Here we go, here we go. Right, now lower it down oh, on my end. God, it weighs a ton. We lower it down here. All right, we've oh. still got it, don't worry. Watch it, you two, watch it, oh, you two, three down. Oh, no. <laughs> here, hold my hand, you won't fall. If you think okay, experience is the only yeah. thing we lack, let me enlighten you. The only tools available are four hammers, a couple of crowbars, and one wheelbarrow. I've never worked this hard in my life. As we started dismantling the building, the lack of transport became rather a problem. We needed the help of the locals. The men helping us are from small farms in the mountains who come down to the new town to earn some money. The government gives them a very basic wage to do any work required.
La verdad, digamos que nosotros reunimos eh, un gran grupo de pobladores que pueden ejecutar trabajos parecidos, pero se necesita fundamentalmente eh, tener una, un poco de especialización. ¿Cuáles son los problemas de diferencia técnica con, con la gente Nosotros, aquí? claro, nosotros acá no, no, no tenemos, digamos, un, eh, un departamento de obras. Nosotros tenemos este departamento de obras lejos de acá. Pero al minuto nosotros hemos vivido acá en la lejanía y el aislamiento. En los programas que existen a futuro, inmediato, es precisamente eh, entregar esa información a la gente, entregar, digamos, los medios eh, técnicos necesarios, eh, construir eh, eh, servicios educacionales para los jóvenes a objeto de que exista acá una mano de trabajo un poco más especializada o que el poblador, el campesino que vive lejos de acá, pueda reunir a futuro algunos elementos eh, mejores para su trabajo y pueda permanecer en el campo, ya que no nos interesa en el fondo de las cosas que este, este hombre que habita en este lugar, en este puro lugar, parta definitivamente a la ciudad a encontrarse con otras experiencias. No sé. ¿Ya entiendes? Ok. So if you want to um, just go down there, hop on the staff, so I can get the line. Yeah, on the corner, yeah, that's right. So the middle of it's right on that corner, on the outside corner. The other day, we saw some kids being drilled in the school playground. I now know why. Today is National Police Day all over Chile, a day's festival in support of the police. We're so cut off here, I sort of forgotten we were in a country under dictatorship. It makes me wonder how the kids must feel about life here. Attention! <laughs> No, no, ya es mi patito. ¿Te gusta marchar? Sí, sí. ¿Por qué? Porque cuando para estar mejor callejeando, andando en bicicleta o jugar otra cosa, es mejor hacer eso que sea sí. más útil. Sí. ¿Qué es lo que más te gustaría hacer en, en, en la vida? No sé. Lo que caiga. Pensaba que de la aviación. De la aviación. Sí. Fuerza aérea. ¿Y vos? Todavía no lo pienso. ¿Y vos, Rubén? La Armada. ¿De la Armada? ¿Te gustaría viajar? Sí. ¿A dónde? A la parte de la Estados Unidos. Tanto que lo dan en películas, más bonito. ¿Qué? ¿Ven mucha televisión acá? Depende de la luz, vamos, de carrera, encima de la televisión. Es que no, no sabemos más qué hacer. ¿Pero a vos te gustaría quedarte a vivir aquí? No. ¿Por qué? Porque estoy más acostumbrada a la ciudad.
When I got on Operation Rally, the blokes at work thought it was really good, and I got an awful lot of support from the top managers down, really. A lot of people thought, well done. You've climbed out the hole a bit. Congratulations. I suppose I'm in a rut, really. City rut. We're all sort of part of the cycle of city life. I mean, I left school at 16. I went to work, so I've always had money. And now I'm only 21. But I'm sort of slave to it. No, lo, lo igual, igual no, así para mí, sea por dinero o no por dinero, eh, igual no, no, porque mi actividad eh, me sale de, de emoción de trabajar, porque esa es mi, mi forma de ser eh, como hombre, de trabajo. ¿Y le gusta? Quiero, no, es que nada, la cámara. ¿Qué cosa que le tenía visita? ¿eh? ¿Tenía visita mi pipito? ¿eh? ¿Qué tenía ganas de besar? Cuando los chicos era la misma profesión que tengo. Pero cuando eras chico pensabas que querías tener algún oficio o que querías ser algo. Claro, bueno, el oficio que veía que mi padre trabajaba, porque mi padre es el, el maestro de construcción. Y cuando yo tenía 9, 10 años ya estaba metido en los trabajos de mi padre. Y deseaba ser, tener esa misma profesión. Y la tengo. Así que, de alguna manera, manera te das por contento. Mm, claro, estoy feliz con lo que me ha enseñado mi padre a trabajar. Y eso me sirve mucho para mí. Porque trabajo en toda clase de trabajo. Así con un entendimiento bastante profundo. London Underground, pay me ten thousand pound a year. And compared to some, I'm lucky, I know. But I don't think my job pushes me at all. I just feel a bit useless at home. You know, I think we all do. If you do do a job that's rewarding and fulfilling, there's one thing it won't be, and that's rewarding and fulfilling financially. So you're falling or right out of necessity, really. What sort of lose motivation to do anything else? <laughs> it's definitely something you're going to look back on in um, years to come and say, you know, Christ, I did that, and that's really good. And I feel, I feel proud that I've done it, actually. I feel really good inside. But I think I'm a silly girl if I waste what I've got out of this three months and I go back home and I carry on the way I was going. So... <laughs> um, I was just going from day to day. I had no set ambition. Um, sometimes I felt that I could do things, but I didn't have the go in me to do it. Now, I know I can do those things, and I'm going to do it. And that's the difference, and that's what Raleigh's done. It's, pro it's shown me that, you know, I can just do anything I want to do, and the only thing that's stopping me is myself. There's nothing else stopping me. <laughs> I never would have thought I'd have come out and said that, because at the beginning, then, I did, couldn't see what Raleigh had to offer. The contrast will be at home, that's it, when I get back. Just don't waste it. <laughs> Drop it here! 
I have a sit trip for you, Emma. We have three walls up, all of the roof trusses on, and the soffits on at one end. Over. Aquello, no, I'm afraid we're stuck here, relying on the local ferry and the municipal boat, which has broken down. Over. ¿Y eso va a cambiar ahora? Claro que va a cambiar con, la, con el camino que va a pasar, va a cambiar. Porque va a haber más, más unión entre una parte a otra. ¿Pensas que eso va a traer progreso? Bueno. Claro, muchísimo progreso. De aquí a uno, un año o dos años más. ¿Y ustedes cómo ven el progreso? Está bien, bien bueno. El progreso es bastante bueno para, para pueblo, por lo menos. Es bastante bueno. ¿A ustedes les va a traer mejoras en su vida? Mejor. Muchísimo mejor. Vamos a ver. Ayudaremos a cruzar la calle a una anciana hacia la penitenciaría. ¡Atención, señora Parker! ¡Sabemos que está ahí! ¡Su casa está rodeado! ¿Qué llama? ¿Oíste? ¡Era una mecedora! Habla, Pierro. We've got to go home in a couple of days. What about Puello? Just 30 miles away from here, the Pan American Highway is being built. When they carry on down to Tierra del Fuego, it's going to come right through the middle of Puello. I know you can't stop progress. I wonder who's going to benefit. Hands on, hands on. I mean, if things are so good at home, why do us lot need to come out and work on Operation Rally? Uh, really sort of sit down and think what I want to do and uh, what I want out of it, out of life, rather than just sort of get carried along on the crest of the wave type thing. But I'm actually going around to do it. I don't know. What do you think you might do? Well, I would. Like well, I'd like, I'd, I think I would like to go to university just to, in itself, to experience it, but also to get better qualifications, to, get, to have more say in the job I do by getting higher up actually be in that sort of position or situation where you've got more say about what happens to you. I feel like I'm, I'm brave. Yeah, so do I. What's going to happen now? But this is like one of those sort of, uh, westerns, isn't it? You've got all lined up one side and one side the other. You've got to do one of those just dirty. Wait, you Okay. 
Y ese sentir que integra la operación Raleigh está escrito hace muchos años por un gran escritor de todos los tiempos y que graficó en la figura de un personaje una guerra que es la que estamos viendo que ustedes están haciendo en naciones como la nuestra. Una guerra en paz. Esa paz que todos los países necesitan para terminar definitivamente con la bestialidad del hombre. Y esa guerra en paz constituyó para los españoles el símbolo de este personaje, que es el Quijote. Y el Quijote justamente es el emblema de esa labor que ustedes están realizando, luchando contra los molinos de viento, que son precisamente las dificultades que hay que vencer en la vida para conseguir en definitiva la hermandad de nuestros pueblos. Creo que es el deseo de los pueblos latinos y creo que también es el deseo de todos los pueblos del mundo. Y yo te hago entrega, yo te dono este cadeau a nombre del pueblo de nuestro país. Minister Cloud, the Butcher Mode, con gratitud por la operación Rally. Rio Palela, Mayo, We've all said we'll come back, but I know we won't.